Remember this is the wrong way, incorrect way. You see the song is coming in already. What we talked about before. Using that body language. It's a new word. A new term, body language. Johnny Fontana, half amazing TV, back with another video. But I'm saying, like, the fact of the matter is, when I used to be a someone like coming up and going out and watching DJs, it was no question like these DJs had the best record collections, had the deepest musical knowledge, were able to rock the most genres, could do like R and B, rock, reggae, good dance hall set, good hip hop, good classics. You know, it was like they could do everything, and it was always clean, always on point, and always like moving. You know what I mean, like. Mm -hmm moving no stalling which i think is probably why why younger djs and stuff they don't go out and they don't really uh that the flow of the night thing doesn't necessarily hit them when, when we were going out it was like so clear what you played at what time and like obviously that ended up getting a little stagnant but they did that because it worked it kept your club packed till 4 a.m mm -hmm. and it kept the vibe until 4 a.m i think for a young person it's probably really hard to like go to a club and like get a sense of the of a flow of a night especially yeah. if there's four djs but even if there's one dj and they're going from you know 70 bpm migos up to you know tiesto and, and all in the span of this hour almost you know it's like it's just different you know it's a different vibe so let me explain to you before we actually do the do, do the tutorial let me explain to you how this is going to go and i'm going to use the actual eqs um and 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 so that you have an idea of how it's all going to play out so let's say now you have the new track okay set up okay now i have the mids and i have the lows i have this now entering into the breakdown okay um, i haven't set my loop yet i just i'm waiting for a, the proper time in order to release this loop and also i am going to start using the bass and start cutting it because you don't want a lot of the clash you don't want a lot of the clash so in order to remove some of the clash you need to start removing some of the elements now this track right here may be coming in the elements maybe vocals or maybe the piano or whatever instrument so in order to prevent too much of it committing you want to ensure that the the body, okay, the mids, especially the mids, and if you have the bass in order for that groove, you wanna keep the mids and also the, the, the mids and the highs lower until you can, you, there is a right point where this one starts to die out, the elements die out, that you can now start increasing it. If you have to loop it until this track starts to remove the elements, then it, so be it, and again, the timing won't be perfect, but at least you won't have the clashes. You call this the better, the the better bad choice. Meaning, you you'd rather have it where the timing is off, which is bad anyway. But it's a better bad choice because you'd rather that the timing be off than to have everything full on clashing, right? So better bad choice. So as this now is progressing, you're already bringing down the the mids. Why? Because again, you want to. It's the the process of of EQing is basically making everything fit. So you're forcing everything. So if it was all full on, it just wouldn't sound right. Okay, it wouldn't sound good. So you're basically painting a picture. And that's where the art of the EQ and the DJ comes now, okay? Again, especially with the long mixes. So now this is down, you have this up. So now as this is about to come in, you start removing the body, okay? All right, and then now you start now increasing the body of this new track, okay, here. Okay, but you have to be careful because you don't want to go too much, okay, because you want to be re released, uh, uh, maintain some of that resistance, okay? And as soon as this one starts getting in, again, because you're going to have, depending on the track, but these two tracks has a lot of effects. So you have every transition, you have the shh, shh. So you have to work. Remember I said work with the music, work with those transitions. So as this one starts and it, and it, and it gives that drop, the, the initial drop after the breakdown, and then now as now this is going to be looping it so it's going to be powerful right it's going to be busy 
as now you remove some of the body, then that's when you start now bringing down the volume. But you don't want to bring it too down because if you bring it too down or you do this whole backspin thing, it sounds like, oh, you see what I'm saying to you? Like you just got cut off. So you don't want to keep it. You want to be gradual, right? And every transition, you want to bring it down. So then it sounds like it's part of the, tr the transition. So when it goes, and then now you're bringing this one down, this track a little bit more down, so it sounds like it's part of it, that it's being removed. So finally, when you have like the third effects transition, you can already cut it out because then it's not as powerful. So again, you have to, the art of it is being able to be smooth, knowing not to hang out, not to keep it there so much, and also be gradual, 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 gradual. Also, not bring it so quick, the gradual, but also maintain some of it again. So basically, you may have to come down quicker here, okay, towards the, the beginning because it's so loud. And then from there, you start to slow down because you don't want to remove it too quickly. So you might have to slow down, wait for the elements to kick in, for the effects to go whoosh, during that transition, and then bring it down. And then perhaps like the third one, you bring it all out and then you're good to go. Today's going to be a quick tutorial, first time back. A little bit of an update on the channel, where we're going, what's happening. Number one, I'm starting a podcast, right, which is going to be like a weekly radio show, have some interviews, DJ mixes and so forth and so on. Um, it's going to be on Apple and try to do it on YouTube as well. Hopefully the music doesn't get uh, um, shut down because of copyright issues. However, I will have playlists and it's going to be essentially the top five. And I'm probably going to try to incorporate maybe tutorials with it. If not, it'll just be like interviews or just, you know, the top five selections, especially for the official start of the weekend. Moving on to the tutorial, right? When I practice or when I'm working on a set, like before a gig, it's really about me going through music mm -hmm. and picking what songs to play that people haven't heard that's gonna work in a room. And it's really not technically based at all. It's almost like I'm about to go out and freestyle and just like throw on a bunch of tracks. But the way I'm going to put it out there and organize the selection, that's really what kind of like motivates me. That's what like drives me when I'm DJing in the club. As it should. In right. Club, yeah. When you're playing and you're mixing and you're looping out of these tracks, especially when it's fast tracks, right? Because again, it's a difference between because you're not going to do it with deep, slow, funky stuff. I mean, you'll do the long breakdown, but when you're doing like in and out quick, okay, when you're, when you're moving, when you're moving, because this style is for moving, okay? So number one, you have, the sounds have to be similar in that when you're moving out of the loop, you don't want the, let's say, the effects of this incoming track to override this. So you have a lot of DJs who they'll do the spin backs, and when the spin backs, it just stops. You go from one to this and spin back, and then all of a sudden it, so it sounds like this, as if something ended. We don't DJ like that. Again, it's about that precision and the timing and also the patience. Number two, the music has to make sense, okay? Um, it's not just going from one and then moving on to another, and then all of a sudden thinking that just because it has the same rhythm or same tempo that... It's just going to work. No, it has to make sense because you're building a set. You're moving from one to another, but then you're keeping that flow go because you're keeping it moving. You're not just stalling it. Number three, as you're now re removing the elements of the outgoing track, you have to be careful of the elements of the incoming track because you have to make sure, and I'll explain this during the tutorial, you have to make sure that you're not clashing. So that's why it's very important that you're you free your mind so that you can hear and listen to the different elements. Because if you're sitting here all bugged out and your your mind is not calm, you're not you're not you're gonna realize that this song is coming in and you're gonna forget your looping and all that stuff. And it's very it gets very you know uh, very uh, um, confusing very quickly. So I just show you I showed you the actual tutorial without having to show you the actual music. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna show you the bad and what not to do first, and then I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna give you one go, and I'm gonna show you how it sounds when it's perfect, okay? Let's go.
I'm gonna move it up for instructional purposes. All right, so what I'm gonna do, right? I'm gonna go, I'm going to uh, show you how to do it, not necessarily the improper way, but the way that a lot of DJs do because they don't execute with precision, patience, and they just allow things to just escape them or they cut things off because they're just, you know, intimidated, they're scared. That's why you gotta be comfortable. Now, this is the difference when I was talking to you about before, when it came to like, hold on. To like dancing, right? Imagine now you have like four or five tracks running at the same time with this. Like at one point in time, like are we be like, all right, let's enjoy the music. We always talk about support the producer, support the producer, but then like we keep playing with these tracks and like, so if you're like a house dancer, you don't want this. You don't want this to be mixed with. And you know what I'm saying? Mess with. Like, and not only that, like you're waiting for like that breakdown, and you're like, because the breakdown is when people like go off and then like start. You know what I'm saying to you? So I'm gonna let it play out. Matter of fact, and I'm gonna show you the 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 wrong way to do it, and then we'll go back, and then I'll show you the proper way. about before using that body language it's a new word a new term body language Right? This sounds too much. Oh, they'll do this like this. They'll do. Oh. Right? So you, you don't want to do that, right? So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. I'll move it up for instructional purposes. And this is the way Johnny Fontana does it. Half amazing TV. I have to throw in a plug. Body language. Hey. 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 
Start knocking off the legs. And watch how the vocals, because of the body language, it's not so high, it's not so up, you won't hear it as much. And if you do, body language down. And guess what? I messed up. What happened there? Right? I did not do that purposely. I actually messed up. So, what would you have done there? What you in that situation you're like, okay, well, you always show me how to how to mess up. So let's let me show you how if you have to recover from that. You're coming up here like this. What would you do in that situation if you if you just ran and you forgot the loop? I forgot the loop. It's, this was perfect, right? Because now I can actually show you something else now. So we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you when, if I did forget the loop. So now, let's go back and do it regular. So that's why I'm telling you like with this right here, you gotta be concentrating. And these are sets, right? Like you, you, you practice these before you
allowed me to finish it off but you see how I, I even almost forgot the loop right there again so it's not always gonna be perfect dude Let's say I have, I'm, I have another track working right now that I'm working. And I don't want this, the breakdown to go. I wanna keep it moving, as you said, right? Keep it moving, keep it moving. So I'm gonna go to two. But all that time that, that that was working, I could have had another track or if I'm using four decks, I could have had another track queued up already and I'm ready to go. You see what I'm saying to you? So that was a trip. But again, you notice how there was a lot of mistakes, right? And so, uh, so, so a lot of the times you don't see like the back end, right, of the routines and like the mixes and like the, pro the professional editing and all that stuff, right? Um, but this is, when you want to have like a routine, right? This is what you have, that's what it takes. Like it takes for you to, lack, to practice, 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 practice routines, and then you get it. But again, you're not practicing all of these for the entire night. When you focus on the technical, like when D technical DJs focus on how they approach a night, it's always like when they, when they work on the transitions, it's always tone play based, wordplay based hmm. or it's kind of like it's not about the energy does well, that make sense yeah well true story yeah <laughs> i'm more like you than that like we would always save the technical for the end because we knew we never could come back from that if you were to do technical shit, then that's all that people want to see <laughs> once you start doing that do you feel caught up like you have like damn i gotta keep coming up with new mixes and new tone play for the next shows only when i spin with zach <laughs> only with zach. <laughs> <laughs> like when i when i spin with zach i'm like this could work so hard but it works in the crowd club environment it's not like he goes over people's heads people actually like it 
You see what I'm saying to you? That's why it's very important that like you have these little. That's why, for example, people have cue points, right? They have cue points for this situation, whatever. So they have these mental, uh, um, what do you call it again? Uh, these mental notes, or these actual physical notes, visual notes, so people can be like, okay, I'm gonna cue here, I'm gonna play here. But I didn't have any cue points. If I had, if I put cue points on those. I would have remembered, right? So it would have been an automatic thing for me, but I don't like doing that because it takes away from me learning and me saying, oh man, I forgot that. And then now, what happens when, if you, and this is the very important point, what happens when you rely on all of these cue points? Your mind then starts to now condition itself for less deeper thinking and fast, 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 fast moving, and you, be, and you start to now rely on cue points and then you forget now if something happens and you miss that point how do you respond because your brain now is not accustomed to thinking critically thinking deeper oh like on the fly what do i do how do i move because you're so used to having something done for you that you don't your brain hasn't been able to think different avenues be like oh i can have the, because again experience is what dictates what you could have done here what you could have done here, I, I had to do that in the past, that worked, that didn't work so well, in this situation that worked, in that situation it didn't work, well, it didn't work the last time, but maybe let's see if it works this time because I have no other choice. So all of these avenues, all of these paths and these brain mappings are all part of this. And that's why you practice, you practice this. So practice set for me, right? So. And guess what? I can practice and practice and practice, and when it comes live, it may not be the best. It may not come out. I may forget the loop. But you have to do what, what, it, what it, you know what I'm saying to you? But again, are you going to remember all of these for every transition? That's what we talked about in the video before. You're not going to be, it's too difficult. But again, like these are little sets that may be diff more difficult, some more difficult than others. Like this one. It's not too difficult, but the more you do them, the easier it is. Again, the more difficult tasks, the better you get at these or those tasks, which frees your mind in order to execute and deliver on more difficult tasks, right? So that was pretty simple, you know, for me, even though I messed it up. But essentially, if I do it again, I'm not... I. I if I'm not talking, if I'm just concentrating, I will be able to land it. Then now, how do I then increase the difficulty at another track? So then when, when I put that cue point, I have to have another track queued up. If I only have two decks, I have to be quick and already know what's going to go after that and be able to, on that minute and 30, or have a cue point set up where it's not at the intro, but maybe towards the breakdown or whatever the case may be. But most likely, I won't have anything set up, so I'm going to have to just use, use the intro and then work my way up unless I know that song. So you see how I, in, in my mind, I just played out the scenarios, different scenarios, without even having played a track yet. That's what it is about not relying so much on cue points and all that stuff, because if you do that, it be, your, your mind then doesn't work as hard to find different escape routes, right? So it's the same thing when... You know, if you're, if you, and going back to the video, and this is the last thing I say, if you grew up somewhere like me, I grew up in New York City, right? A lot of the times I used to walk when I was in the sixth grade, I was 11, 10, 9, 10, 11 years old. I used to walk about three miles to school. And sometimes I would take different routes with my friends and the kids would run after us. You know what I'm saying to you? And, and, and want to fight with us and all that stuff, bullies. So... As you got older, you started looking your surroundings, right? You always felt that, you know, someone was after you. So you didn't live your life in fear, but you were always prepared, right? You were always, you know what I'm saying to you? So one day, a quick story, when I went to Philly, I haven't been in that environment in a long time, you know? I was, I was, I'm, I was older at the time. This would happen maybe five years ago. And I was with my wife, and we went to, you know, some Philly cheesesteak place, and... I ordered, you know, a Philly cheesesteak, two of them, and we were like, oh man, it's the first time in Philly. You know, we were, I was living in DC at the time, so I was like, hey, you know what, let's go to Philly, 
have the cheesesteak fam. I never had like a cheesesteak sandwich from Philly, like an authentic cheese, cheese, cheese. I mean, a cheesesteak Philly. And I was like, yo, let's do this. I had my backpack, whatever, because I had a baby, a newborn at the time. And so, and it was a long line. So I ordered, I, and I came out like two, like it was six inches. And it was like $24, $24 for like two six inch cheesesteaks. And I was like, man, like I just got got. And there was no like price subs and all that stuff. And I was like, yo, I got, I just got got. And it was just weird. And so I went outside and I was telling my wife, I was like, yo, like I just I feel like I just got got. And like that feeling, right, of like, oh, just like you're so vulnerable. Like that feel, feeling of vulnerability that I used to feel for people as a police officer. When I used to be a police officer, I used to understand that feeling of vulnerability when I used to go and do reports and mm. respond to calls. But... My wife started laughing, right? I mean, jokingly, but she was like, oh, you got got. And I was just like, it just, it didn't make sense to me. And some dude, some Italian dude was coming and walking in. And he was like, yo, what happened? I was like, yeah, I just I just paid like $24 for this. It doesn't seem right. He was like, yo, come over here. And we went back into the shop. And it was packed, right, you still. And he went to the counter, I guess, to the side. He was like, yo, my man, give my man back his change. And he gave me back my change. And I was like, yo, like, I truly got got. And for the rest of the day, like, my wife, she was, like, making fun of me. But, like, that pride of, like, yo, dude, like, you're from New York City. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you, you from this. Like, obviously, you know, you came out of the hood. You came out of that. But now it's like, you, you know. And I'm sure people from different parts of the country, different parts of different countries, from Mexico, from Italy, from Germany, or even from, from Latvia when I when I went. Like, I got got a couple times. So it's not to say that your, your places of, of communities don't have that. Um, but what I'm saying, though, as it relates to, like, <sighs> DJ, and I'm giving you an example of how if you don't, you know, put yourself in these situations from time to time, you're going to be caught, you know, blind, and you're not going to know how to react. You see what I'm saying to you, especially when it comes to DJ, and that's why it's important for you to practice these things practice 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 try to figure out what would i do in this what would i do in that so these tutorials not only i use to share with you but it's all, it also helps me it keeps my brain focusing so now as i'm thinking about this i'm like oh why would i play with that my mind is already working thinking oh this is this is what i would do this is what i would do so when i play live i this is my practice you know what i'm saying to you because now the easy stuff of playing song to song to song to song and programming it comes natural now, the most difficult part is what do I do when things don't work? And what do I do when things shut off? And what do I do when the crowd is not really feeling me at all for three, four, five songs? What do you do? You see what I'm saying to you? So again, these things, and that's why you need more music. That's why you can't, and that's why part of my, in my, my Latin video, How to Mix Latin Music, I speak about that. A lot of DJs be like, yo, how do you get this song? This particular kind of deep house. Now, yo, dude, don't be trying to find that one particular deep house. Find music. Eventually, you'll come to different sounds, and then you'll come up with your own sound, and you'll be like, yo, yeah, I got a couple of those, but that's not my main thing because, again, our tastes change and evolve. So one year, you'll be like, yeah, I wanted that, but now I'm not really feeling that because I'm playing more of this stuff, and I'm feeling this groove, and you start evolving. And then you're not worried about, oh, that one particular sound that I was looking for. And when it comes to like playing for other people and playing around and being exposed, you're not limited to just this. You see what I'm saying to you? So anyway, Johnny Fontana, Half Amazing TV, we out. And sorry about the buzzes.